Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Um, we all know that the current efforts of fighting back climate change are far from enough. Uh, that's why we created NNIL to change all our roads in the world into renewable energy sources. My name is Sarpapatya, and I will introduce you to all to NNIL. Um, our deal is we will sell our device for $1,750 per, per, per device to uh, both public and private authorities. Our first beachhead market we would like to enter is uh, Turkey's municipalities. This is because we've already built uh, great contacts over there. After this, we will go to Europe, um, going through our contacts in the Netherlands. What we offer our client is a device which can also be used off-grid, so not only on the net, but on off-grid. So this means this is much better for private users. The ability to make marketing with green energy, uh, a device which is low in maintenance, uh, since our device is a, a modular structure, it can be asse assembled and disassembled in just a few minutes. You pay for a one-time investment energy source and uh, big data. Our device is also capable of collecting diverse data. Uh, a thermal reactor costs around $3,500. Uh, the cost of, uh, is around $3,500. Um, while the cost for uh, one kilowatt of Enlil is around $1,750. So this means we reduce the cost for per kilowatt by 46%. This is Enlil. Uh, there are no turbines uh, designed specifically for the road. Our, our turbine is designed so it could capture the uh, wind created by cars, as well as natural winds. It's also the first tur smart turbine in the world. It can collect uh, data such as carbon footprint, weather forecast, um, earthquake uh, prediction monitors, traffic management, IoT platform, and there's also a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, since uh, electric cars are becoming more and more common, our product could be used perfectly to charge these uh, vehicles on the road. Out of 27 customer, potential customer interviews, we found out that they want cheap energy, a device which is low in maintenance, and the ability to use it off-grid. They really fell in love with our IoT platform, the ability to use it as a marketing device, and uh, being able to use it on their private uh, properties. Two weeks ago, we won the Mercedes-Benz Technology Contest in Turkey. That's why they invited us last week to their headquarters in Stuttgart. Here we talked about po possible uh, partnerships. So our uh, turbine will also be uh, powered by Mercedes, which is, of course, great for our marketing purposes. In five years, we want to uh, generate $4.3 million in profit. This is based on our net price of $1,750 per device and a profit of $950 per device. A power plant generates 42,000 tons of CO2. Uh, while, um, while our NL will only generate 840. So this means we will reduce the CO2 for, uh, by 98% with our device. Our dream is to become globally known. We've already have accomplished this by going incredibly viral on the, on the social media. You may have seen us on Cheddar, 9Gag, World Economics, or Forbes. Uh, here we generated tens of millions of views with just only one, using one video. Um, that's why we want to give back to the community. Um, one, uh, worldwide, 1.2 billion people lack the access for, uh, for uh, energy grids. This is mostly in um, developing countries. That's why we would like to donate one of our products out of uh, 100 sold ones to developing countries which are in need of this. And by this, we would like to make all the roads in the world into more greener roads. Thank you very much. So with, with a smart turbine, so this is exactly where smart cities are going with their poles and things. So I'm curious, who pays for those extra services? I assume that puts extra cost on your turbine. For, for the turbine or for this data? Who pays for the Wi-Fi, the, all the other sensors and all the services uh, on actually the Actually, for, uh, for example, the big data is the, uh, so important for the cities, for the smart cities. Yes. Not municipalities and uh, governments need for this data. Not, uh, actually, they don't have this data. We can sell them. For example, Simons also uh, do this. Are there any customers that you've proven that they'll pay for this on a turbine instead of on a pole? So, what was the question? 
Are there, have you guys proven that any customers would, that municipalities would pay for that on your turbine? Yes, yes. We're talking to governments now in Holland. Um, they're building new roads now. And uh, on that road, I own the largest truck wash of Europe. So uh, the truck wash is near a road with 9,000 vehicles at 24 hours. That means that uh, we can install endos there and um, we collect the smart data. So um, the government wants to know the CO2 levels. The, um, in Holland, it's not that earthquake monitoring, not that important, but in Turkey is. And all the other data, it's not obviously uh, very important for the, for the governments. And also uh, in May, uh, I was in the Germany, the GITS, the Deutsche Gesellschaft in Tantum Zum Arbeit. They invited us uh, to Berlin. Was, was. And, uh, the, <coughs> we had a meeting uh, for this uh, data and stuff like that. But they are so interested in, uh, for the place or turbine in the Berlin or something like that. Ashwin, did I see your finger? Is this product usable at multiple scales? Or is it like, you know, is it community scale? Is it individual unit scale? Is it you know, city scale? Well, de depending, for example, uh, if you want to use it as a private user for, uh, uh, for example, for his company, um, we're planning to put on a f three or four devices which can power his whole building. But if you want to use it as a government, you, we will sell it as packages in 300 or 400 pieces. So it will be more useful for the, for the, for the cities. And of course, you can scale the smart, uh, the smart part of Enlil 2, of course. You got uh, the dumb ones without the smart options. Of course, that will, uh, for the electricity. And you got smart ones for the, for the big data, of course. Piers. Yes. Uh, what is the lifespan usage for this product? 20 so, years. Kirsten. There's a very related um, product like this for ships, one of the big Nordic shipping companies, um, which made me uh, wonder, do you need the passage of traffic on both sides to run the turbines? What happens when there's no traffic? Can you use these in a series of other applications that are only roads, since we want to get away from roads? Yes, because uh, you don't need... the. Uh, Let's, let's, say, let's say it like this. Um, you don't need both traffics to, to make it work. Only one way is enough. But it's, of course, uh, smaller to put it on the busier roads instead of the less busier roads. And I will put it on my rooftop. So okay. Also, by creating the wind, it's, yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you.